Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started now. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's webinar from Trade Risk Guarantee. Uh, in today's presentation, we're going to go over uh, kind of an overall update on the status of the Canadian Customs Fund and what businesses that import into Canada should be getting done now compared to what is you know, to come in the next few months to a year. Something to keep in mind throughout this presentation is that the changes to this process are currently underway. So new announcements are still being published directly by Canadian Customs and are subject to change. Now, my name is Meredith Lambert. I will be your host and presenter for today's webinar. I am the marketing manager here at Trade Risk Guarantee, which translates to being responsible for researching and creating the educational content for all of you. So be, feel free to take a look at some of the other content we've created and you know, reach out with any questions. This webinar is being presented by Trade Risk Guarantee. Uh, we are located in Bozeman, Montana. Uh, we operate on a direct importer business model that is unique to the international trade community since it cuts out the need for an additional middleman and allows TRG to become an additional member of your international trade team. And we'll get into more about us later in the presentation. Now, this webinar will be recorded and it will be available on our YouTube channel for future reference. If you want to be notified the moment it releases, I highly recommend that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We post additional educational content um, there covering a variety of international trade topics about once a month or so. You can find us by searching trade risk guarantee hyphen TRG in YouTube. A link to subscribe will be sent out with the webinar recording as a part of the follow up email. Now, please submit your questions in the question box in the webinar interface throughout the presentation. I will be trying to answer as many as I can at the end of the presentation. Um, now, any that I cannot get to or need to look into further, we will be um, looking into and then reaching back out after the webinar. So, you know, be patient. Some of these, like I said, a lot of a lot of what we're going to discuss today are announcements that are still in development or you know maybe we don't have the hard and fast answer for right at this moment but if you ask the question we are going to go look into it and reach back out to you so you know whether it is me or one of our experts at trade risk guarantee now also as a quick reminder this presentation is for educational purposes only and does not constitute legal advice In today's presentation, we are going to cover the following topics. First, a brief introduction to CARM for those of you that maybe are not as familiar with this yet. Then we're going to discuss what importer handle now and what you should be trying to get done now, followed by what is to come. So what what we're looking at for the next, you know, in the next few months. And then finally, we're going to briefly go over how to calculate your Canadian customs bond amount. So that you know you guys can start thinking about how to do that now let's go ahead and get started with a brief introduction to CARM now CARM stands for CBSA assessment and revenue management CBSA uh, is the acronym for Canada Border Service Services Agency so that's kind of the shorthand for Canadian Customs similar to how you know a lot of times we say CBP to, to uh, in regards to US Customs and Border Protection. Now CARM is a multi-year initiative with the goal of upgrading and modernizing the current import process for Canada. The focus is on creating a digital interface that provides importers with access to their trade information and account balances, direct payment solutions, and trade tools that simplify their importing processes. This will allow CBSA to better track and analyze import and export data and ensure compliance. So while CARM aims to simplify um, the importing process for Canadian importers, it also has the added benefit of allowing CBSA to dig into the data of importing and exporting. Therefore, we will most likely see an increase in security 
when it comes to identifying trends and potentially dangerous shipments. The official CARN vision is to deliver a globally, sorry about that, deliver a globally leading customs experience that is client-centric, facilitates legitimate trade, improves compliance and revenue collection, and contributes to securing the borders of Canada. CARM is being rolled out in phases that are called Release 1 and Release 2. CARM Release 1 officially went live back in May of 2021. In this release, the CARM client portal was launched. This portal is a self-service tool that will facilitate accounting and revenue management processes with CBSA. We're going to dive deeper into the CARM client portal in the next section, so we'll be covering that more extensively. Now, with release, uh, with the release date for CARM release two, um, that release date has shifted a couple times over the last year or so, but the current release date for this phase is October 2023. Release 2 will expand the functionalities of the CARM client portal by adding electronic commercial accounting declarations with the ability for corrections and adjustments, new requirements related to the release prior to payment program, harmonized billing cycles, new offsetting options, and electronic management of appeals and compliance actions. In that second bullet point, one of the new requirements for the RPP program is the Canadian Customs Fund, which we will be discussing much more later in this presentation. Okay, so what can and should you, as a Canadian importer, handle now in regards to the CARM updates? Now, a big part of the rollout of CARM is the creation of the CARM client portal. Uh, we also refer to this as CCP for short. Um, as I mentioned previously, this portal was launched in spring of 2021, and importers are already able to register on the CCP. It is strongly recommended that importers complete their registration for the CCP prior to release two, and that release two date again is in October of 2023. Completing this registration will help ensure that there is no interruption to your importing processes. Every Canadian importer must register and access the CCP in order to be eligible to import into Canada. Essentially, if your business is not registered through CCP, it does not really exist in the eyes of CBSA moving forward, right? There's gonna be a grace period, of course, but that is how they will be proceeding with business after this point. Now, as release two uh, is currently planned for October 2020, sorry, October 2023, uh, the first thing a business that imports into Canada should take care of now is signing up for that CARM client portal. This portal will allow Canadian importers to manage their business information, create trade transactions, and access customs declarations and payment information electronically through this one interface. Currently, the CCP, um, the access that has launched as a part of release one, uh, has given importers kind of a limited look into their trade documents and import process. However, once release two goes live, importers will gain full visibility. So still you can sign up and get a lot done through the CCP. And then as of release two, everything will be available. Now, since signing up for the CARM client portal is mandatory for any business importing goods into Canada, the sooner you get this account set up for your business, the less likely you're, you are to have any hiccups with the implementations that are gonna be coming with release two. So now we're gonna kind of go over how to sign up for the CARM client portal. Um, we're gonna briefly this is going to be a very general overview and we're only going to kind of go over some of the first steps just to give you a, a, a an understanding of what you need before you start um setting up this access but for full details on how to sign up i will be directing everyone to visit the cbsa website directly the carm engagement team has been doing an excellent job of putting out detailed information about upcoming processes and helpful guides 
to answer any questions that may arise along the way when it comes to registering. Uh, this link will be included in the follow-up um, in the follow-up email, like I mentioned before. Now, before you move forward with signing up for the CARM client portal, you will need to gather certain relevant information. Um, so, speaking of resources, uh, the CARM team has created a worksheet to help importers gather that information. Again, I will be sending out a link to this resource uh, with the follow-up email after this webinar. Uh, but in case you miss that or you want to look for it immediately, it can be found on the CBSA website in the onboarding documentation section of their CARM page. Um, and if you're watching this recording um, after the live session, that link will be in the video description on YouTube so that you can all find it. Now, once you've gathered that relevant information, the following are the first steps an individual can take to set up or sign up for the CARM client portal. I'm going to go over each of these steps very briefly, but again, there is a full robust guide that the CARM team has put together that we will send the link to. First, you're going to need to go, go to the CBSA website and log into the portal using either a sign-in partner like a financial in institution with which you have already set up online credentials, or a GC key. Uh, now, a GC key is a unique Government of Canada credential that you create. If you do not already have a GC key, you may create one directly through the online portal. Next, you will need to register for multi-factor authentication. You will automatically be prompted to register for this uh, if you do if you have not previously completed the registration project process. This is where I mean this is we're all pretty familiar with this. this uh, it's basically where you provide an email address where a security code can be sent for future login attempts. Um, you will then create your personal profile. This personal profile contains your contact details. Now this is specifically for you, the individual. Um, it also is include your any settings or preferences you want to set up and setting up security questions for your account. Now finally, you will need to complete your setup process by either registering your business for the first time or requesting access to an employer if that a business account has previously been set up. Let's go over these two a little bit more. Now if your business has not been registered in the CARM client portal previously, uh, the first employee to register will have to set up the business as well. This step is intended for authorized users with access to privileged information, so it is best that if this is handled by a person of authority within your company. The user who completes the registration of the business on the CCP will automatically become the business account manager, also referred to as the BAM. Uh, this is the person with the ultimate account authority. Now, a business can only be registered to the CCP once. All additional users within the organization will have to be approved by the BAM in order to access that company's information. The BAM is able to assign another BAM role um, within the organization or other user types once they approve a user um, to that business. It is important to keep in mind that if your business account manager leaves your organization, you will not be able to access their personal account with the CARM client portal. So make sure to delegate the BAM role appropriately. If your business has already been set up within CCP, an employee will need to access, uh, sorry, will need to request access to the employer when they set up their account. Now, the general hierarchy kind of looks something like this. This is a very you know, general graphic, uh, but basically the business account will be set up within the CARM client portal, and there's only that one business account for your business, and then users will request access to that one account. At least one of these users will be designated as the business account manager. So you can have multiple employees have access to your business account at different user levels, um, at least one of them will need to be that BAM role. And, you know, I, again, this is, these would be employees that you want to have access to your importing information with 
Canadian customs. Uh, so people that are kind of handling that on, on behalf of your business. <clears throat> Okay, so now let's move on to what is to come for Canadian importers with release two. This is probably why most of you are attending this webinar. Now, one of the biggest changes coming with CARM release two is that each individual importer will now be required to secure and post their own financial security. Now, prior to this, importers were able to use the financial security secured by their customs broker, but this will no longer be the case. With CARM, CBSA is moving toward a customer-focused relationship, meaning that the importer will have a more direct role and more direct relationship with CBSA. The requirement to post security applies to importers that wish to participate in the release prior to payment program, um, which I'll get into in the next slide. But just to sum this up, I, a lot of the people on this webinar are current U.S. importers. This change that uh, Canadian Customs is making is very similar to how the U.S. bond, the U.S. Customs bond works currently. So it's something we're all familiar with. However, it is new to how Canadian Customs functions. Um, you're no longer going to be able to clear goods on the financial security your Canadian Customs broker has. You will need that financial security yourself. Now, going back to that RPP program, uh, you know, why would you want to partake in the RPP program? Uh, the RPP program uh, allows importers and customs brokers that have posted security with CBSA to obtain the release of their goods with deferred accounting and payment privileges. Participation in the RPP program is pretty much standard practice since it allows imported goods to move through the clearance process faster and much more smoothly. Benefits of participating include obtaining the release of goods from CBSA before paying duties and taxes, deferring accounting for goods, and deferring the payment of duties and taxes. In the most simple explanation is that it allows importers to clear their goods quickly and then ensure payment and paperwork is in order. Um, so again, uh, not all importers, it's not mandatory that you participate in RPP. Uh, if you do not, you would have to pay all of your duties and fees, anything associated with importing to Canada prior to those goods being released by Canadian Customs. The RPP program, however, is what allows those goods to move through very quickly and smoothly. So again, it's become very standard practice in Canada, um, you know, for obvious reasons. Now, there are a couple of ways for Canadian importers to post security. One way is to post a cash security. A cash secur security is a one-time deposit that sits in a CBSA account to act as a guarantee against an importer's account. If an importer places this cash deposit and then later decides to withdraw from the RPP program, this cash deposit will be refunded back to the importer. Ultimately, this option is best for importers that import a small volume of goods into Canada. So they would have a small um, amount of duties that they're paying monthly. Another way to post security is through a financial security agreement. A financial security agreement is provided by a financial security provider, a surety. Um, it guarantees an importer's account. So this, uh, this financial security agreement is more commonly known as a bond. It is what, basically what we are talking about when we say the Canadian Customs Bond. Um, it is this financial security agreement. This option is best for importers that import a larger volume of goods into Canada. So that would mean they are paying a higher amount of duties and fees to the Canadian uh, Customs monthly. Now, the way the bond ultimately works is, is very similar to U.S. Customs Bond. Uh, a Canadian Customs Bond is a financial security that importers and, and customs brokers place in order to secure the duties and taxes owed to CBSA. This bond is backed by a surety, 
and it acts as a financial security that the principal on the bond will pay money owed to CVSA. So if you're familiar with how a U.S. Customs bond works, uh, works currently, it is very similar in this regard. The bond is a three-party contract between the surety that backs the bond, the importer that is the principal on the bond, and Canada Border Services Agency. Uh, the bond is in place to guarantee that the money owed to CBSA is paid, so it protects that revenue stream for Canada. It is not in place to protect the goods imported or the importer themselves. Now, in the case of the Canadian Customs Bond, an importer, again, is required to have that bond in order to participate in the release prior to payment privilege. So that right there is definitely different from, um, from the U.S. Customs Bond. Here in the United States, every importer must have a U.S. Customs Bond uh, aisle in order to import into the United States. In Canada, at least, how it currently stands is that a importer will need to have a bond or that cash security on file in order to participate in the release prior to payment program. Uh, so there is a little bit more um, of an option there. Now, some of you may have run into this, uh, into this issue throughout the process of researching this bond. I know I have, uh, but it, you know, this bond seems to go by a lot of names. So I thought we should go through a few of these just to kind of clear the air. First off, we have the tried and true Canadian customs bond. This term is, is mostly the colloquial term uh, that is used in conversation and online when referring to this bond. There are actually multiple bond types that you could technically call a Canadian customs bond, uh, much like how there are multiple bond types that are encompassed in the phrase US customs bond. However, we know that when most people use the term US Customs Bond, they're referring to the Activity Code 1 importer bond. So as we you know, continue to move forward with this discussion, I will be using the term Canadian Customs Bond um, kind of as a shorthand for this bond. Now, you may have also heard the name Canadian D120 bond. In actuality, the D120 um, is a reference to the form that is used to secure the Canadian Customs Bond currently. This form is also used when placing other bond types with Canadian Customs. So this is the general form, and then you would pick what type of bond you're placing. Now, the next term is release prior to placement bond. This is uh, currently the more official name for this bond since it directly refers to the fact that the bond is in place in order for an importer to participate in the RPP program. And finally, uh, we have the term surety bond for Canadian customs. This is a term we have run into from other service providers. Uh, for example, a lot of importers that use FedEx um, or UPS to clear their goods have been told by those providers to secure a surety bond for Canadian customs. This is really just a long way of referring to the same bond. Now, when do we have to have that bond or cash security in place? Well, the requirement for importers to have their own financial security in place goes into effect when release two goes live. Uh, now, this is currently planned for October of 2023. As it currently stands, there is not a way for an importer to post their financial security through the CARM client portal. Therefore, CBSA does not recommend posting your security prior to release two. However, there are legacy ways of posting security that importers can engage now if they so choose. Once release live, or sorry, once release two goes live, importers that have already signed up for the CARM client portal and registered for RPP will have a six month transition period within which they can post security. This is another reason why it is important for Canadian importers to sign up for the CARM client portal prior to release two. If you have this account in place, you will have a six month grace period in which to place a bond or place that cash security. Release two will also allow importers to submit their security electronically through the CCP. So after you have secured the bond with a surety and paid their fees for the bond itself, you will then be able to tie that bond with your business electronically through CCP. 
Now, what we have been hearing from clients um, here at TRG, um, some clients have decided to place their Canadian Customs Fund now. And the reason for that is because some of them are being, um, they have reported that they are being charged a percentage fee in order to use their broker's RPP bond. And that is currently, they are being charged this percentage fee in addition to the duties and fees they have to pay to Canadian Customs. Now that of course has been a motivating factor for them to secure their bond now in preparation for release too. So, you know, while everything coming out from Canadian Customs is to hold off on placing that bond, obviously everybody kind of has a different experience. And that is something that we've seen um, some clients encounter. And, you know, then they have reached out to TRG to place that bond, which is something we're able to do for them. Okay, so let's move on to how to calculate the bond amount for your Canadian Customs Bond. The formula for this bond is not too complicated on the surface. Basically, the bond size must be 50% of the highest monthly accounts payable to CBSA within the most recent 12 month period. The minimum bond amount currently is $25,000. Importers without a 12 month history will need to estimate the amount of duties and taxes they expect to pay in order to determine their bond size. Now, while CBSA will have import input in your bond amount once they go to approve it, it is ultimately up to the importer themselves to determine the appropriate bond size. This is why forecasting your accounts payable will be important to avoid sufficiency issues. If you have signed up for the CARM client portal and already have a 12 month history of importing into Canada, the CCP will calculate your recommended bond size for you. Uh, this is a tool that is currently available in the CCP. So if you have already created that CARM client portal, there is a section that will calculate that bond size for you. It will also calculate how much you would need if you decide to go with the cash security as well. Now this is a little visual aid we have put together to illustrate how to correctly determine your bond size. Basically you will need to look back over the past 12 months and total up how much you have paid to CBSA within each month. Once you have identified the month with the highest total, you would take 50% of that total, and that is the required bond amount. And then, of course, if that is below 25,000, uh, you would need to round up to that minimum amount. Keep in mind that these monthly totals are of the duties and fees that you have paid to CBSA and not the value of your imported goods. So this monthly amount would also include any GST that you have paid as well. So now let's look over a couple of examples. If an importer's highest monthly accounts payable is calculated to be, let's say $100,000, they would need to post a bond for 50% of that amount, which would be, of course, $50,000. Now, if an importer's highest monthly accounts payable is determined to be $30,000, they would end up needing to post a bond for the minimum amount of $25,000. That is, of course, because 50% of 30,000 is 15,000, and then that would need to be rounded up to that minimum. Keep in mind that every business will have a different calculation for their bond size within this formula. So it is important, it is important that you reach out to your customs broker to calculate the monthly totals and then reach out to your surety agency to help you determine your bond size. Remember that if you have multiple brokers, you will need to include all duties and taxes paid to CBSA within those months. So contact each of your brokers to ensure that you have all of the correct amounts. One topic we have not touched on too heavily when it comes to Canadian Customs Bond is bond sufficiency. Um, as a quick intro, bond sufficiency refers to whether or not the bond amount is adequate to protect customs revenue and ensure compliance with applicable law and regulations. Now in the US, when a bond is deemed insufficient, CBP sends a letter to the importer to inform them, and then the importer may not be able to clear goods until an adequate bond is in place. Now, as part of release two, CBSA has stated that they will be monitoring the financial security utilization rate, which is the bond sufficiency, 
through the CARM client portal. Therefore, monitoring the sufficiency of your Canadian Customs Fund should be fairly easy as it will be a provided service directly from CBSA. If you would like to learn more about bond sufficiency as a topic on the whole, we do have a full ebook on the subject in regards to the US Customs Fund. Um, and there are also a few educational videos on our YouTube channel as well, if you prefer that you know, video, um, video presentation. Okay, so now that we've gone over the calculation of the bond amount for importers that are posting their financial security in the form of a bond, um, let's go over that cash, cash security option. The calculation is a little bit different for those that are posting a cash security. In this case, the deposit must be 100% of the highest monthly accounts payable to CBSA within the most recent 12 month period. So you would need to look back over those past 12 months and total up how much you have paid to CBSA within each month. And then once you have identified the month with the highest total, you would take 100% of that total and that is re the required cash deposit amount. So let's look at a couple of examples of that as well. If your highest monthly accounts payable to CBSA within the past 12 months was $900, you would need to place a $900 cash deposit with CBSA. In this example, it may actually be a better option for the importer to place that cash deposit as opposed to placing a bond with a surety. However, if your highest monthly accounts payable to CBSA within the past 12 months was, let's say, $40,000, you would need to place a $40,000 cash deposit with CBSA. This pretty quickly illustrates why the cash deposit is a more viable option for lower volume importers, while the bond option would most likely serve higher volume importers better. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and open up the discussion for questions. Um, I've already gotten a couple in, so remember to submit your questions in the question box in the webinar interface. I'm going to go ahead and read through those and see, you know, what we're able to answer and what we're going to have to look into more. Now, while those questions, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of time to submit those questions. I'd like to take a minute to talk about TRG. Uh, Traders Guarantee is, again, an international trade insurance agency. We work directly with importers and exporters and have been doing so for more than 25 years. We've got over 13,000 clients that we work with every day, specifically discussing these complex topics and helping them navigate through the world of customs. We're an additional resource for importers um, along with their customs broker and their freight forwarder. So our model does help save time and money and our multi-year billing cycles are significantly less usually on the customs bond uh, than what the average would be. Typically people are paying somewhere between $475 and $525 for their customs bond and we're down to $225 a year with our multi-year pricing on that $50,000 US customs bond. We can continue to work with any broker or forwarder of your choice and then we have our in-house claims assistance from licensed customs brokers that are going to help you navigate any issues that come up along the way. Now, all of that that I've talked about so far has been on the U.S. customs bond side, and we, of course, are now able to place Canadian customs bond as well. So if you have any questions or if you'd like to place a customs bond prior to release two, feel free to reach out and our experts can help you kind of navigate that this new world. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and look over these couple of questions that have been submitted now. Uh, let me just get, take a moment. All right, so the first question is, uh, I've kind of already gone over, but I'll go ahead and address it again, is when do we need or should we have the bond in place for CARM? So again, in terms of what CBSA is recommending, they are, they're, everything they've put out has, basically said, wait until release two goes live. And again, if you make that um, CARM client portal um, account for your business and you get all set up there, you will have a six month transition period in order to place security. So there's definitely gonna be some, you know, some wiggle room when it comes to getting this in place. 
Um, however, again, if you're facing some additional fees from your brokers or you know, you're kind of running into these issues, you might want to place that bond prior to release too. I would, of course, recommend that you reach out. Of course, I would recommend that you reach out to TRG and we can discuss that with you and see if that's the best option for you. Um, if you have that bond in place prior to release two, it could help again to make sure there's no hiccups along the way once release two goes live. Um, but again, reach out, ask the question. Every case is unique. Every situation is different. If you're a lower volume importer, you might prefer to place that cash deposit. And if you place that cash deposit, that's something that you really are going to want to wait till release two to do, because that's going to be done through the CARM client portal pretty much completely. So you wouldn't want to start that process when they don't have it ready for you. All right, so moving on to the next one. Okay, so this next question is, we only export from the US to Canada not importing on the Canada side, does this still apply to us? So I was a little confused from the start of that question, because I thought that meant that you imported into Canada. Basically, if you're, if you're not importing into Canada, this specific topic of the Canadian Customs Bond is only for Canadian importers. In the same way that the US import bond um, is only for US importers. If you are exporting from the US, you don't necessarily need to have a customs bond, right? Um, unless, of course, you're doing both. It's going to be, you know, just to draw that parallel, it's going to be relatively the same on the Canadian side. You're going to need that bond if you're importing into Canada. So that does apply if you are, if you're receiving goods into the U.S. and then, you know, let's say you're you're breaking them down in your warehouse and then you're shipping some of that shipment up to Canada, that part of that shipment would be you importing into Canada. So therefore you would be a Canadian importer. So that is going to apply to you and you're gonna need one of these bonds on file. This is a big change for Canadian customs. Um, you know, prior to this, you would place your security with your customs broker, your Canadian customs broker, and they would kind of handle all of that, <clears throat> all of that for you. This is Canadian customs really switching to, you know, more similarly to what the US currently does, which is that that liability and that relationship on the bond is now being placed on the importer, on the Canadian importer. So, you know, I'm trying not to draw too many parallels because obviously it's two different countries. There will be differences in the process, um, but we can draw certain parallels, at least for basic understanding. Okay, so that is the only two questions I've received at the moment. But if you guys have any further questions, in the future after this webinar, you know, if you watch the recording of this and any others come to mind, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, you can reach out to us at the following emails. So if you have any questions, again, you can reach out directly to marketing, myself, um, at marketing at traderiskguarantee.com. You could also reach out to our general um, help email which is ask an expert at traderiskguarantee.com i'll send that email out in the follow-up um, additionally check out our blog at traderiskguarantee.com slash trgp it's got a treasure trove of excellent articles and information and don't forget to find us on you know all the social media facebook twitter linkedin and of course youtube youtube is really the primary place that we post uh these um that we post uh, these educational materials on. Uh, we, we will be sending out a follow-up email tomorrow with links from the presentation. So look out for that in your inbox. And again, that will include the webinar recording as well as those links. Um, and you know, I might include some other answers if any other questions have been asked here. So thank you again for attending today's webinar. Um, I hope you found it informative and hope we see you again in the next one. Thank you.